Okay, let's see what we've got here. Hi, Elizabeth. My name hey. is Shamara, Mara for short, and I have three questions today. My first question is, what would happen to us, as they call us black people, if we never came out of Africa? Okay, so I'm going to address these questions one at a time. Um, I know you have three questions, Mira. Thank you for the questions. Um, yeah, that first question, what would happen to us as so-called black people if we didn't come, of, come out of Africa? Well, um, that would mean that you would have remained more pure, meaning that um, when you're in a land, like Africa's got a lot of sun and the climate is really conducive for us, more conducive than being in cold countries and other places. And before other races came on the planet, it was a black planet, meaning there were only black people first. And you know this by way of genetics, by way of the, you know, the anthropologists and archaeologists and the findings. And um, it would have been uh, called the green zone, right? And there were only the tiny people, which we refer to as the Patarites, that came on land from the waters first. So you had um, the green zone with the females being like four feet and four inches and the males being five foot and four inches the other way around. So um, life was great. It was all vegetation. There wasn't any like meat eating or killing of the animals until other extraterrestrials came. And this is uh, mentioned in the books of Genesis. They talk about like the giants known as the Nephilims and later on um, referred to as the Anunnaki and then other types of extraterrestrials came to the planet once they knew of it. And when these um, giants, they were like six foot to seven foot um, beings that came and they raped and mixed them with these Patarites and then produced um, beings of different heights because they weren't supposed to come here, but they broke the immigration laws and came and, and obviously how the Galactical Federation and other beings realized that they came and broke that law is because the beings, the offspring were of different heights. So another zone was created called Zupu. So you had Nupu, which would be the, the green zone, and then you had the red zone called Zupu. And this is how chaos started on the planet. So if you never left your environment, you'd be eating the right food, you'd be getting the sun, and you would have progressed and lived peacefully. Um, there's actually an actual fact called existence how and why. This is actual fact number 36, um, which goes into a lot more detail about what I've just said. And it is important because you may be new to Wusabat, and one of the things we encourage people to do is to read the scrolls because a lot of times we answer questions and we just give you as much information as quickly as possible but the detail is in the books. Yeah, so I hope that's answered that question. Let's move on to the second question. My second question is, my DNA is mixed with 2% Europe and Northwestern Europe. So does that mean I'm six ether? I hope that's not a silly question. No, it's not a silly question. No question is silly, yeah? No question is too complicated or silly for us because we realize that people are at different levels and it's important to um, to explain this whole ether thing. Um, ether is like the glue that holds everything together in the universes or the multiverses, omniverses. So you can't escape ether. However, to explain ether to people, you have to realize there's a difference with hair texture, which we talk about when we talk about ether. So. With hair texture, you have like six ether, seven ether, eight ether, and nine ether. That's to explain it that the, the more thick and curly and uh, potent your hair is with more protein, etc., it's going to be nine ether. This would be like the hair of the sands people. It's so tight and neatly curled. Remember, your hair grows out um, from the follicles and curls. This is how we get what people call Afro, or we say natural. But the nine ether is so thick, you can't even get an Afro comb through it. Then you go down in less um, level of potency to eight ether. So that's when people have got 
nine ether here, but it's not as thick. And then you'll have seven ether, which is even softer. And six ether is like when the hair is so straight that it's, it's really, you know, you don't, you, you don't even need to make any effort to put a comb through it. So like the European, Caucasian, what people call six ether hair. So that's just dealing with the hair. Now, in terms of being a nine ether being, the negroid being the first has the most amount of ether. So that would be a nine ether. And as you, that's dealing with your melanin. And so as you get weaker, then you, you lower your ether. So the two main ethers that we speak about when we're dealing with races is nine and six, because they're like the opposite direction or the adverse. So nine ether would be the negroid race. Um, and then you'll have like what we call the, the um, Caucasian who would be six ether. And then in between you have like the Javadu or what we'd refer to as the Asians, which would be, you know, seven and eight ether. So yes, whatever is mixed with the nine ether will still be, the nine ether will dominate because of the DNA when you're dealing with genetics. Yeah, so you are still nine ether. Most people, most of us on the planet now are mixed anyway because there have been so much mixture over the thousands of thousands of years. So it's very rare to find someone who's going to say, I'm pure nine ether undiluted. Um, but yes, yeah, so the three root races, Negroid being nine ether, um, the Caucasoid being six ether, and then the in-between being what we would call the mongoloid or the Asian being seven and eight ether. So yeah, you're still nine ether regardless of how much other percentages are mixed with you. Let's move on to the third and final question. And my third question is, where do all the other different races come from? Thank oh. you, Wusabat. Thank you for your question. All right, so the third question, I'm going to have to now explain it again properly. Um, and if you haven't seen the previous videos, go back and watch the, you know, the OSM videos because we've covered the race question so many times. But I'm going to go over it again. So um, you have three root races, right? Negroid, Mongoloid, and Caucasoid. That's African, Asian, and Caucasian. But then you have sub races, which are the fourth, which would be like a mixture of any combinations of the root races will be referred to as a sub race. In addition to that, you have what we call the neutronoid race. The neutronoid race is when you take different percentages of the three sub races or even the um, sorry, the three root, root races and the sub race, and you can mix different percentages of them to come out with an outcome that you can't really tell the difference. You can't tell if they're Negroid, Mongoloid, or Caucasoid, or a sub race. So it's so hard to tell where they belong to. That will be known as a neutronoid. And, and in addition to that, anthropologists break down these three root races into Homo naledi, Homo habilis, which would be the African, and then the second classification would be the Denisovan and the Homo florensis, which would be all the Asian, and finally, the what you call the Cro-Magnon or the Neanderthal, which would be the Caucasian. Yeah, so that's how we break down the races. Um, I hope that's, again, answered your question. But if not, um, yeah, just send more questions, read and um, watch some of the, the previous videos and we would, we would have addressed some of these questions already. All right, now, um, let me just address something else that's come up um, because I do, we do read the comments. We read every comment on every video just to see how you know, people are reacting to the videos and if they have any questions. Um, somebody made a comment recently about me mentioning um, the books of the Bible and the Quran, and then saying that they should read our book, which you know I always um, refer newcomers to because this book gives you information, it fast tracks you. So let's be clear, we always say read everything, research everything. You know, we say go and check it out. So by us telling you to read our book, it's not saying don't read any other books. 
The problem is when people read the books like the Bible and the Quran, they get into this situation where they think this is the word of God or this is the word of Allah and it's like there are no mistakes. It's, and then anyone who doesn't subscribe to or agrees with those books, they're shunned upon. So we say these books are not the originals anyway. So we're not saying don't read the Bible or don't read the Quran or the Talmud or any of these other books. Read everything. But what we're saying is don't get bamboozled and tricked into thinking that this is the, the words from this creator because the language that the books are written in didn't exist up until a few thousand years ago or like, do you know what I mean, hundreds of years. So it's like we're trying to break the spell of you thinking that if you don't follow and read everything that this so-called book from God, Allah says that you're going to hell and all this other, you know, technology that comes along with it. So we're not saying don't read any books. Read the books, but when you read the book, does the information help you? Or is it like no use or no, no, no point? So we're saying read every book, but take from each book what, um, what you will from it. And on that note, um, I actually do want to show you and go through a few books because a particular set of books that we call The Way. So The Way, yeah, is in our language, Pa Taruk. That's the Wusabat way. And it covers everything you need to know how to live and how to govern yourself. So this one is called, and these are quite small, quite easily digestible that you can read in, you know, a few hours. The unclean issue, this deals with people's, like, for the females, dealing with like the menstrual cycle and the things that we should do in terms of hygiene as male and females, right? Then we have um, Atlantis. A lot of people talk about Atlantis. Atlantis disappeared and goes into um, talking about you know, the emerald tablets and things like that. So Atlantis is a very good one. The Golden Children. This breaks down um, a particular type of children that have been born since, say, 1973 to the year 2003. And these children have special abilities and powers. You may be one of those children. And this will help you to identify and know what that means to be a golden child or golden children. God is creators. Right? This deals with the female being the goddess because the female was here first and they're the creators of the male. So this goes into that information. Black is evil and white is good. This talks about what people talk about um, in terms of like black magic, white magic, and people can cast spells on you and things like that. So this goes into what is black magic and what is white magic as well as other types of what people call magic. The ghost. So a lot of times we get questions where people are asking what happens to you after you die? Are there disembodied beings and souls that are roaming around? The ghost goes into what a ghost is and, and what that means, etc, etc. The dimensional shift. The dimensional shift is talking about the day and time we're in. A lot of people talk about we're living in a new dimension. We're shifting. We did a video called 3D to 9D because most people are living in a three living in a three dimensional world but there are other nine, other dimensions the reason we say 9 is because after 9 the rest of the numbers are compound numbers so there are different dimensions so people might say 11 12 13 but those are just um, the compounds of 1 to 9 nine dimension the dimensional shift is talking about in 2012 there was a dimensional shift there are many shifts that take place all the time and we're living in a new reality now, right? We also did a video about living in the, in the matrix. So this goes into the dimensional shift. Um, division. Division is a very good part to act because it talks about the tricks that the matrix uses to divide people up. Like we were saying, if you're Muslim, if you're a Jew, if you're a Christian, and within each one, there are different denominations. So what they do is divide people up by separating people based on religion etc and even amongst different races they will have racism that divides people up so the division explains the, this technology which we say is trick knowledge the mind's eye 
So when we're dealing with mental health and people having all kinds of visions and certain things that they see, and to them, it may appear to be real. Sometimes it's not real. It's just what you're seeing in your mind's eye. So this part of that goes into the mind's eye. Um, this one, I was there, which is here, deals with the planet Earth has had many what people will call destructions and life starting over again for millions and millions of years. This talks about times when the planet was destroyed before there were humanoids on it and then how it came to evolve, etc., etc. Um, just a few more. The power of language. As you know, we are always breaking down how language confuses people and how the spell is cast through words, right? And I explained about the last video I did, I think Alpha and Omega, meaning Alpha being the alphabet, or you start with an alphabet when you're dealing with language, and the alphabet forms words. The words then are used to form sentences. The sentences form paragraphs. The paragraphs form chapters. The chapters form a book. And a lot of information is put through books when people are following these religious books, for example. So the power of language, how you can use language to break the spell, meaning a lot of words you say, you say good morning, you say certain words and you're not aware that you're saying things that are actually having an effect on you. So the power of language goes into that. Um, the all expanding. You've heard us explain about when you start to look at things from how things evolve from atoms and the fact that everything starts off as a small seed and then it grows outwards. So even yourself, you started off as a sperm from your father that was put into the ovum of your mother and then you grew and then you came out here and you're still growing, you're expanding. But you by yourself is one and that's referred to as you being your own universe. One is uni, starts off and it spirals outwards and then other people are their own universes. But when you have more than one together, you get dualverse, which is two, or triverse, or multiverse, and omniverses. And then everyone is expanding, the planet is expanding, the universe is expanding, the galaxies are expanding. So the all expanding is literally what it says. All. You, when you say all, all is all. Eh? You can't take away from all, you can't add to all. All is. And all expanding is how we're growing. I think we've got a couple more. 30 spirits. We've explained in many videos about you are composed of multiple personalities, which can be 30 in all. But of course, you, you have to subtract the people that are still alive from your matrix. Why is it 30? Because as I've explained before in other videos, Gregor Mendel, who is the father of genetics in the West, explain that things change in the fourth generation. So when you look at the 30, you are at the top, then you have your parents, mum and dad underneath you, and then their mum and dad and their mum and dad going down to your, your grandma, your great-grandma, your great-great-grandma, great-great-great-grandma, and all of those personalities make up your, your 30. And if, say, your mum is still alive, you subtract one. So then it would be 29. Those are the ones that have passed. If your dad is alive, you subtract another one. So it would be 28. So there are those who are physically here and those who have crossed over or are in other realms or dimensions that still work with you as a part of your matrix. And I think um, right, this one is called diagnosis of the races, right? Because the different races, they eat different types of food. And the diet that you choose will have an effect on you. So all you have to do is look at the elders of any race and look at what they eat and you will see what kind of diseases or what kind of ailments or kind of health issues they have. I'll give you an example. If you eat a lot of rice as a race, then that rice might affect why a lot of them will have diabetes, for example, because... Um, the rice, the starch in the rice will turn into what people call glucose. Glucose is sugar, another form of sugar. When you look at, when you diagnose um, 
races, you will be able to see what health conditions they have. And a lot of the times it's based on what they have eaten or what they eat. And so that will help you to know that if the elders ate a lot of rice and a lot of them suffer from diabetes, then you can change your diet to not eat so much rice. Because as I said, the rice, the starch in the rice turns to glucose and the glucose is sugar. And then this is how you get diabetes, just as an example. But that goes into more details. And concentration, this one is very good because when you start to learn how to meditate, how to tune into yourself, one of the things you have to be able to do is concentrate, right? And this helps you to learn how to concentrate. Um, what else do we have here? Speaking of tongues, um, you hear people talk about, you know, in church they, they start to speak in tongues and, you know, that is really dealing with spiritual encounters with disembodied entities that try to speak through them um, and they start to speak what we call gibberish and they will term that speaking in tongues and this goes into that. So I'm just going through some of these quickly because yeah I think that's all the ones that I've picked out. We literally have hundreds of parturats which in Wusabat translates as the way, the way you should live. So if you haven't read any of them Go on our website, order them, read them, so that you can start to learn how to live by the way of Wu Sabat. Um, yeah, so if you have any other questions, send them to us. You can send us three questions as the ones I've just addressed. Now, if you are living far away outside the UK, we'll be happy to answer them via video, just as the ones I've done. If you are local in the UK, you can have the opportunity to come and you know, ask me or ask these questions physically. We can invite you, send those three questions. The links are below. Send us three questions um, asking, you know, the kind of questions you would like to, to have addressed. And um, we'll get back to you. If you want to send it to osmvision.wetransfer.com. Um, yeah, we'll look at those videos and we'll get back to you.